Today we meet Andy from Therapy. Hi. Nice to have you here. Nice how to are, be here. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Very good, yeah. Therapy exists for 25 years mm. now and you did incredible 14 albums. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Where do you take this uh, creativity yeah. and your ideas from? What is your secret behind that? I think it's we enjoy the whole process of being in the band. We enjoy touring, we enjoy writing material. We love playing live. And that's inspiration in itself. You know, ideas come from anywhere. They can be things that happen in real life or maybe reading books or watching movies. What are your favorite movies for your inspiration? Oh, I don't know. I like, um, I like a lot. I like Werner Herzog movies. Um, okay. I like um, Ella Tarr, uh, the, the director. I also am uh, a big fan of uh, Tarkovsky. They're, he's, they're probably my favorite director. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, you, you have a new album out now called mm. Disquiet. Mm. And many people say this album sounds a little bit like your sound from the 90s. Yeah. Do you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, I think so very much. That was the idea. We wanted to make a song with catchy melodies and guitar riffs again and less experimental than the last records and we achieved that. Uh, the songs go down very well live, the choruses are memorable, uh, the songs are very energetic. Yes, so we, we wanted to make a record that was maybe a bit like Trouble Gum, a bit like High Anxiety. Okay. Yeah. I like the album very much, oh, by thank, the way. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Do you read uh, critics about your music? Um, well, I, th I find it difficult because sometimes, it, you know, it cannot, I'm only human and it can upset me. If we put yeah. a lot of time, effort and our heart into a record and someone says it's rubbish, it, it does hurt. So the, the other thing you have to remember as well is if you're going to take all the great praise, if people like the record, you have to be prepared to take the, the criticism as well. Um, I mean, fortunately, with this album, the, the, most of the critics have been fantastic. We've been, very, we've been very lucky with this record, but in the past, some of our records have been horribly treated by critics. Mm, I know. And that can be upsetting. But you know, at the, at the minute, it's, I don't really read it. If, if someone sends me something like, you know, if my wife or one of the band members or somebody at the management says, oh, you've really got to read this, it's a great review. Uh, and then occasionally when we're on tour, you maybe pick up a magazine, there's an awful review, but that's just the way it works. Yeah. I heard a story about Munich and uh, I wrote an article in a magazine that you um, drank more than 100 liters of yes. beer in Munich in the year 19, 1995. That's very do, true. Do you remember this I do remember it very incident? well. It was a wonderful day because we had a day off in Germany on tour okay. and Oktoberfest was on. Ah. And we all said to our management, look, we've never been to Oktoberfest. So the record company we were with, Polydor, in Germany at the time, They took us down to um, Oktoberfest and we basically just drank all day. There was a lot of us. I mean, there was the, all the band, all the crew, you know, the tour management, you know, the merchandise seller. We all went out and we met some people from Bayern Munich who gave us a, a signed pendant of the club. And then we sang uh, who, the, who the F is Alice on stage with a, a, a traditional Munich band. And then we went on the roller coaster. Oh, At the end okay. of the evening, yes. And then the next day in the paper, the newspaper, it said Irish rock band drinks 150 liters of beer. <laughs> yeah. Is it true that thousands of people were spitting at you at a concert in Chile, in South America? That's true, yeah. That was, it wasn't just us, it was all the bands on the bill. There was oh. uh, Megadeth, Alice Cooper, Paradise Lost, Therapy and Clawfinger. And all bands apart from the headliner. Uh, I think the headliner, Faith No More were on the bill too. Yeah, I think the headliner that day was um, Alice Cooper. But every other band got really badly spot on. Yeah, it was, uh, well, it's just, I don't know what it is. Why did the people do that? They do it to everybody apparently. It's, it's uh, just okay. horrible, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have one more effect. Is it true that you spent some really hard party nights together with Ozzy Osbourne? No, we never... You, we, 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 but you were on tour with him. We were him. on tour with him, yeah, but Ozzy d didn't party when we were on tour. Okay. We spent some nights with the band. We had Joe Holmes, as a guitarist, and... Mike, uh, Mike Borden from Faith No More, we had a few party nights with those guys. Um, and also Robert from Metallica was playing bass for them at the time. He uh -huh. was a really lovely, super lovely guy. Yeah, but we never partied with Ozzy. We, we, we had a chat with him, we talked to him, we talked to Sharon and he had the, the kids with him on time. He had, uh -huh. um, both the Kelly and Jack were on tour with him. 
Yeah. Really, really nice people. I mean, the whole organization around Aussie Osborne treated us very, very well. It was fantastic. Yeah. Okay, uh, one more fact. Um, is it true that you played uh, together with Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden mm -hmm. in a very small club in Belfast? That's true, yeah. It was um, Radio One Rock Show uh, was being hosted by Bruce Dickinson as a presenter. Uh -huh. And he came to see us in Belfast and he wanted to know if we would do a cover version of Black Knight by Deep Purple with him. So at the end of our concert, we brought him on stage and he sang Black Knight with Deep Purple. It was really, really good fun. Oh. And our, our drummer, Neil, is a super Iron Maiden fan, so he, he was like in dreamland. It was wonderful <laughs> for him. You are um, a big football fan, by the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm a season ticket holder for twen over 20 years for Chelsea, oh. which probably isn't a good thing to say in Munich <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> because it's, it's of the okay. Champions League. But um, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, that's something that's a, I absolutely love the club and it's something that I do whenever I'm at home. You know, I go to the home games, try to get to Champions League games too. And uh, I've, I've, I've always loved going to football. I'm also very, very interested in football all across the world. You know, I, I keep an eye on the Bundesliga, I keep an eye on uh, okay. the Liga as well. What is your personal highlight in 25 years of touring, your personal therapy highlight? Well, both of them have got to do with home. We recently got given a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Northern Irish music mm -hmm. industry to recognize 25 years representing Northern Ireland in the music business. And that was a real big honor for me and for the rest of the band because, you know, that was our home and that's our home and the place that has made me what I am today. So that was really moving. And also, the, um, there's a really famous concert hall in Belfast called the Ulster Hall, okay. which whenever I was a kid, that's where I saw Metallica, The Smiths, Jesus and Mary Chain, bands like that. And the first time we played there was 1992, and we've played there quite a lot since, and I love, that was just for me to be, go from being the kid watching bands to being the guy on stage was a big deal. Okay. Thank you very much You're for very talking welcome. to us. Thank and you. And I hope to see you uh, again in Munich sometime. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.